all of these businesses, the map, the way that it's drawn out, does that help the authority have more businesses in? Because it's supposed to be a core business district, correct? Well, I'm not that family, but I'm included in the DDS. So why would, why would you want to include me in the DDS? Yeah. Yeah. Many times in small and medium-sized communities, the, like Highway 41, what we call the corridors, are included in, in an extended methodology and approach to stabilize that corridor, because that's what the visitor coming into town sees. And so there's a part of the advantage of, of why, and I don't know who the property is, but um, when a mayor council sits down with input like this, <coughs> Um, it's a dialogue, it's a discussion to figure out. And, and I'll give you a, a real quick example. Um, Tiffin started its Main Street program, but the EDA was in existence several years before 1986. In 1993, we talked about uh, a tax district. They decided they didn't want to do it. We never did a petition around, we never did, we just talked about it. But a part of the strategy, uh, and the attorney mentioned this. A part of the strategy is to figure out where there's a certain base of value because it, it doesn't make sense to do a tax history if you've got a lot of vacant land. You're not, you as a community are not going to generate enough revenue uh, in order to make the project happen or to fund a downtown revitalization program. And, and I want to say this as clearly as I can. Next year in July will be 30 years to the day since Tipton started its downtown program and they have never created a special tax district. They have created one, but they couldn't. Mm -hmm. so, no, they have never created a special tax district. <coughs> but they have not seen the need for any sort of reason to create a tax district. So that question occurred in our frequently asked questions about trying to understand if the mayor council creates a DBA, does it automatically create a tax district and the attorney, I think, address that, but, but I'll say that our experience, you know, I mean, that's the decision that you come to some point in the future if you choose to do that, and yeah. there, there, there is some discussions about that. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to go back to your question that you mm -hmm. asked, why would you be included? Yeah. My I'm, I'm sorry, um, I'll back up a second. Um, I'm trying to go back to the question that you asked about why would you be included or excluded. As a business, typically, in an overall community redevelopment approach, um, and if you're on corridor, it might make sense to be included because not today, but maybe three years from now, you might be interested in some type of assistance that that downtown development authority could give you. And the city itself may not be able to do that, and that's and the attorney alluded to that about why DDAs are created because they are imbued with um, capabilities. I'll use that word. I don't want to use the word power. Capabilities that can help. They are the they are literally the bridge between the public and the private sector. They're designed to create it. And to give y'all, I, I work with the Department of Economic Development, and y'all heard about that little car plant that's located over in Truth County. If I were to tell you, and this is public record in the Atlanta Journal, how much money was laid on the table to get that little car plant to come in there to create 1,000 jobs, let alone the thousands of other jobs that reach out in circles into Alabama, it's called incentives. And even on the smallest of scale of downtown development, and I am not in this moment talking about a tax district, I'm just talking about a DEA being able to help make a deal happen so that somebody like Walter Altman will come into Hayhira and put a quarter of a million dollars into this downtown. And, and I'll say this, nobody paid me to say this, but as a downtown manager and as a downtown or a community property owner, I would be hoping that people would be willing to come in here. And I'll tell you this, I'm a retiree, and I can name the five cities that are on my top list to move out of Atlanta to move into, and every single one of them, because I have experience in it, have a DEA, they have a management program, they have ordinances in place that make that community worthy of my investment. And if y'all want quality, I read your vision, and a lot of y'all talk about you want quality growth, you want job sustainability, you want job creation. And again, the only way I can tell you from my experience is trust, if you can, this mayor and council to work with y'all to move forward to help create the CDA to help everybody in this community. Well, well let me just stop. There, there is a lot of problems with trust. Thank you.
And I can't address that. That's the discussion that we have all the time. And, and as a business owner, the other problem that I have is the levy of tax. You know, you say, well, we may not levy a tax, but you have that capability, correct? They have that. They have the capability, and they may not. Just say it. They may not, but they have the capability. And if they have the capability, how much tax? I pay a lot of tax now. I don't want to pay any more tax. In a special district in the code that cities are allowed to create, it's no more than three mils. Now, again, I want you to hear what I'm saying. That is a capacity that the city of Hay Pilot has right now. No DDA involved. And, Mr. Attorney, you correct me. You said this earlier today. Under the code of Georgia, cities are allowed and counties are allowed through the Constitution to create special tax districts anywhere that they deem necessary. And for necessary reasons, and he used the word supplemental services above and beyond the sanitation, security, fire protection, all those things that the city or the county normally provide, those tax districts are created to help supplement that. In Huntsville, they have a special tax district that's been around for many years. Since the 80s. But they chose to create that. And they used that to fund a part of their functionality of their downtown. That was business owners that came to the city council that said, please impose this tax upon us. And collect this tax. And the reason they wanted it done like that is that not just the retail merchants were paying it, but the banks, the offices, everybody that was in that downtown business district paid that tax. Now, it wasn't a lot of tax. It was an amount that was equal to whatever your occupational tax was. So if you paid $100 in occupational tax, you paid $100 in the surtax. And what the city ended up doing is because they didn't want that money, they said, okay, we'll collect it. Now, you tell us how you want us to spend it on your downtown or your area that's going on. Another reason that maybe the area is big, think about infill. As you all start to grow, a DBA can help you with new projects and start where you've got gaps along the way to help infill. Okay. We've heard all the good stuff. I've not heard any negative. So what are the negatives of the DBA? Y'all said you were going to say it. From 30 years of experience, I'll address your question. One of the negatives can be people not doing what they should do. When a DBA is created, sometimes it's not always the best mix of people in the end. And this is life. This is reality. Y'all know this as well as I do. The best thing this community can do, and this mayor and council can do, if you so choose to create a DBA, is find the most qualified people. And I do a little presentation where I talk about it. It needs to be a deal maker. It needs to be a diplomat. It needs to be someone incredibly skilled in finance, somebody incredibly skilled in real estate, and the list goes on and on. Because here's why. Those seven people represent this whole core district that whatever y'all as a community have decided to call the downtown development party area. You want the best people you can possibly have on that DBA. And through the years and through the towns in Georgia, and Terry knows this and Terry knows this, sometimes you get one or two people that are kind of, they don't get along with other people, and the DBA can just kind of plateau. But then eventually that changes. But again, that's life. That's like politics. That's like mayor and council. That's like county governments. It ebbs and it flows through the years. And our council appoints the DBA. Yes. Mr. Attorney? Then we're not starting off very well.